This is a very basic overview of the anatomy seen during laryngoscopy of the vocal cords and surrounding structures. The larynx is in the anterior portion of the neck and once you have placed your laryngoscope you will hopefully be able to see a view of the vocal cords at the superior aspect of the entrance to the trachea. The area that I'm drawing now is in the anterior portion of the view and represents the epiglottis. The epiglottis is a cartilaginous structure that as you swallow will fall down over the entrance to your trachea and allow food to slide over it and into the posterior esophagus. The next arrow I'm drawing here shows the false cords and they sit more superior to the vocal cords. More inferiorly then are the true vocal cords. The next two lines I'm drawing here are the cuneiform and corniculate cartilages. These help to provide the larynx with rigid support. The next line I'm drawing is the aryepiglottic fold, which forms a sort of a cavern with the false cords as seen in this picture. I've also drawn the piriform fossa in, which fall down the side of the larynx. Some extra points to consider are that when the cords are open, that means they're abducted. When they're closed, they're adducted. The laryngoscope that you're using will sit in the vallecula, which is anterior to the epiglottis. The larynx is a rigid structure and posterior to it lies the esophagus. Although in the previous picture it looks quite squashed at the back, therefore making it hard to visualise. This is always supposed to be a very quick review of the structure seen during laryngoscopy. There's much more to be learned about this topic, including the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles that move the vocal cords. All of this can be found at propophology.com in the resources section. Many thanks to voicedoctor.net who has provided excellent laryngoscopy images as Creative Commons content.